Hello, uh, my name is Dr. Tina Cannon from Chenega State Community College and in this video clip we're going to discuss uh, how to find different parts of a frequency distribution and how to take a set of data and actually construct a frequency distribution, a relative frequency distribution, and a cumulative frequency distribution. We are going to use our course compass uh, site and uh, the handout that we're going to use is located under the calculator instruction tab and this is divided up into units so we are looking at unit 1 and this will be for homework 1-3 uh, but notice we have parts of a frequency distribution handout and this is what I want to use today uh, to discuss this. Uh, we have a frequency distribution that's given to us and uh, we can see that it's discussing weights of discarded plastic and over on the right it tells us the number of items that were in the different classes. Um, the numbers on the left are called our classes and the right is your frequencies and you're going to be asked to find uh, what we call the lower class limits, the upper class limits, and the class midpoint and class boundaries. In this particular frequency distribution, your lower class limits are talking about the numbers to the left in the classes. So in the first class we have 0, the next one is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, as you see listed in your uh, handout. So that's your lower class limits. The upper class limits are the numbers on the right. These are the higher of the classes. And you see 0 0.99, 1.99, 2.99, 3.99, 4.99, 5.99, 6.99, 7.99, 8.99, 9.99, 10.99, 11.99, 12.99, 13.99, 14.99, 15.99, 16.99, 17.99, 18.99, 19.99, 
and continue the process. Notice we have to stop when we have a number beyond the 5.99. So in our case, we end up with the class boundary 5.995. Now, the class boundaries are used with graphing, and so they're a little more uh, difficult to calculate, but you're just finding the difference between each class. Okay, class midpoints. Think of the word midpoint means the middle. So when we're finding class midpoints, that's the next thing that they're going to ask us to find. You add the upper class and your lower class and divide it in half. So 0.99 plus 0 we know is 0.99. If you divide that in two, the middle of the first class is going to be 0.495. But remember, our class width is 1. So if I add 1 to this number, this should be the middle of the next class. If I add 1 to the next one, it will be the middle of the next class. So a class uh, width is very important in finding these things. So you notice the, the last thing they asked you to find class width. Really, we should have found class width at the beginning, and then we can use it for all these. But notice this is your lower class. This is your upper class. The class boundaries are in between the upper and lower. The class midpoints are in between the classes in the middle. And then your class width, and this is where a lot of people miss, is between the lower classes. So these are the different parts of the frequency distribution. Now, I want to actually uh, pull up a problem. This is the problem, and they're going to ask us to actually construct a frequency distribution. Now, what happens is what we just did was work with a frequency distribution being given. In this one, we want to actually calculate a frequency distribution. Uh, in this problem, they already are giving you the classes, but I want you to notice that at the very beginning, they give you all the information. This is the data represents the daily rainfall for one month. So in, on the right hand side you can see I think there's like 30 values of the amount of rain and we can see uh, like on the day with zero there was no rain when the, we have any numbers that means they had rain. And notice as you construct a frequency distribution and they tell you where they want you to begin. Begin with a lower class limit of zero. That's talking about the value in the very first class, the lowest one, the zero. And it asks you to use a class width of 0.2. Now what that means is you're adding 0.2 to, to 0 and getting the next lower class, not the upper class. It's the lower class. If I add 0.2 again, I get 0.4. If I add 0.2 to this, I get 0.6. Notice this frequency table continues over on the right. Now, the part that people have trouble with is, well, how do you get the upper class limit? How do you get this number on the top? What you do is you take 1 off of the last number in your uh, second lower class limit. So, for instance, this is 0 0.20. If I take off 0 0.01, take off 1 off the end number, notice I would get a 0 0.19. What I do is I think of this being 20. I think of it without the decimal first, and take 1 off and I get 0.19. If I take 1 off of 40, I get 39, but we have to put our decimals in. Do you notice that if you add 0.2 to this number, the 0.19, you would get 0.39. So this is how they come up with all their um, classes. Now what we're asked to do is take our calculator and they want us to take this information and they want us to find the frequencies. So what I've done, I've taken my calculator and the way you're going to do this is you have to go to the STAT button, S-T-A-T. This is very important in this course. Uh, the majority of what you're going to be working with will be in the STAT button and the variables button, those two things. So right now we're going to push STAT and notice we have to edit and so I'm going to push enter and I've already typed in the values into list one, so you could pause the video now at this point and actually type these values into your list. Um, so I have these typed. Now what I want to do is to do a frequency distribution, I need to sort the data. So if you push the STAT button again, you can see that it has two different uh, commands for sort. This is sort ascending, sort descending. We're going to pick number two.